Hey everybody, Paul here once again with a quick tip tutorial. Uh, in this month's quick tip, I'm actually going to be revisiting uh, this tutorial from around 18 months ago. It's still proving to be a very popular download, but the methodology in it has evolved somewhat, let's say. And so in this quick tip tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the, the two techniques from that video, but in a much faster, more elegant, and user-friendly way with the tools that we have available in Grease Pencil right now. So without any further ado, why don't we jump into Blender and let's get started. So you will find this working file in a link below this video. It'll just take you to a free Patreon post and you'll be able to get the zip file with this working and the final file all together. What you're going to see is this modified version of an old file that I did about a year and a half ago. All I've done to it is basically brought it into the now as far as Grease Pencil is concerned. I've made much simpler materials. The last file, if uh, anyone recalls, there was all these different materials for all the different colors. Now, because we can uh, vertex paint, I only want a stroke material and a fill material, and that's what is uh, going on with this head. This head has four layers. It's got a color layer, a shadows layer, an inks layer, and a highlights layer. And what we're going to do is replicate this on this head here. And I've deliberately made uh, this problematic in a couple of areas so that we can take a look at how to apply these quick tips. So I'm selecting head two over here. And again, we've got these four layers here, highlights, inks, shade, and color. And we've got the stroke and fill materials assigned to them. Now, if we go over into draw mode, uh, automatically we will get our color palette. I've got this Toon palette and it's got a bunch of colors that we can assign to various areas. Now I'm going to hit numpad one to go into front view here. I'm just going to middle mouse and then shift middle mouse click to drag so that we can take a look at this head nice and large. There's our tiny little camera. Why don't we make that invisible for now? And I'm going to come down to this fill tool and I want to fill this area. Now, traditionally what I would do is I'd just take my pen tool and I would trace around everything and then massage all those points into place. But there's a quicker way with this fill tool that I'm gonna teach you today. You may not have known this, but the fill tool comes with this little plus and minus button, which can flip the direction of the fill, mainly meaning that you can either fill in the positive area, which is inside lines, or the negative area, which is outside lines. And what I'm going to do is actually invert it by hitting on this minus sign. This means that when we click outside of this head, it should fill in everything. But we need a couple of other things before we do that, because we've got this massive gap down here, and we've got these little gaps in the ears, which are going to be problematic. And even if I close those up, why don't I just click there and click there? Well, then I'll have two shapes to work with. I want one consistent shape for the head and the shoulders. In order to get some boundary lines, we hold down Alt while we're in the Fill tool. And we just draw a line from this line. I'm holding down my mouse and I'm just drawing across. Okay, I'm going to hold down Alt again. I'm going to draw little boundary lines here and there and here and there, yes, they're invisible. But now if I click outside that head, we get a nice consistent fill. Now, if I go into edit mode and zoom in, you can now see those boundary lines that I created. You see, there's one there, one there, one there, one there. We wanna clean those up because they can uh, cause all sorts of problems. And if you've uh, got just a still on one frame, you can just use the boundary strokes, or you can go boundary strokes on all frames if you've got many frames in which you did this fill. Now, if we go back into edit mode, you should see that those have indeed gone. Let's fill in these eyes real quick using the same method. I'm going to click my fill. I'm going to make this a positive direction on the fill. I'm gonna select uh, this as the eye color, maybe make this slightly bluer because I want these sort of nice mauve eyes. And then I'm going to hit Alt, I'm going to draw a boundary line there, draw a boundary line there, draw a boundary line here, and draw a boundary line there. And then I'm going to click on this eye, click on this eye, there it is. 
and uh, again uh, let's let's give it these sort of a nice sort of gray blue this time for the eye color and I don't need to do any boundary lines here because all I've got to do is click there and click there because those shapes are already enclosed. Now for the irises, I'm going to lock off that color layer, go into my inks here, go into edit mode, select, shift, select that eye and hit L to get those links. And I'm going to switch the material to fill. So if it, it should be on stroke, go over to fill and go assign. Now because this layer was created with vertex color black, these should fill in black even though the base color is this light gray. If that doesn't happen for you, you can go into the tint mode, make sure you're set to black, and then uh, making sure you've got that layer enabled, just tint any of those inks that are the wrong color. All right, so now with our colors filled in, we're going to work on this shadow layer. So I'm going to lock off this inks. I'm going to unlock the shadow layer. And before I do my shadows, we need to know about masking. All you have to do is enable the masking mode by clicking this little dot here, or the tick box of the mask over here, right? And when we open up our mask options, we can hit this plus sign, and select an existing layer as the mask. In this case, we want to click on colors because colors have this nice big block. So this shadow layer, I've already set this opacity to a factor of 0.63 and the blend mode is regular. And I'm going to draw with this pencil tool, but let's make this an ink pen so it's a nice uh, smooth line. Uh, material is set to fill and I want the uh, color to be black. Also, I have to make sure that under my vertex color, my mode is set to stroke and fill and that my mix factor is set to one. Now I can draw the shadow with a black and I'm going to start on the inside of the head and I'm just going to rough out some of these lines where the shadow should sit. Okay, and it's gonna go under there. It's gonna go down here then around there. And then instead of following that contour, I'm just gonna draw all the way around here. And you'll see that the shadow does not go outside of this boundary. But if we went to edit mode, I'm going to select all, I might just hit F to uh, fill that gap up there. You can see that this shape is not very neat. If I took away that mask, you can see how that fills in. But with the mask on set to this color layer, it's using those shapes on the color layer as a mask. You can also draw shapes in the fill tool by holding down shift in the fill layer. And what's this good for? Well, if you need to fill in areas at some point, but you also want to quickly draw in others, that's where this comes in handy, just to have a modifier on that tool. And then we'll just do that on the highlights as well with a white, we hold down shift, Draw a quick circle there, for highlights on the eyes and a highlight on the nose. And we can drop the opacity a little bit on that as well. And now we've very quickly uh, created uh, probably a better looking head than we had in our previous version. And uh, you know, no doubt you can go in and edit bits and pieces of that. But essentially that is how it is all done. So I hope you got a lot out of that quick tip tutorial video. As always, if you like what you saw here today and you want to be notified of any other videos that are coming up in the future, do hit that subscribe button. And if you're feeling at all generous, why not join the legions of my Patreon supporters over at patreon.com. It's the support I get over on Patreon, which makes the production of these videos possible. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye for now.